episode. Um, as you know, the, uh, the municipal elections are coming up. Uh, the day to vote is October 22nd. But what makes it very historic and special is that uh, there are four candidates, if not more, of uh, Somali descent. Somali Canadians are running for office. And today we have a uh, beautiful guest, Sami Abdi, who's running for um, uh, Scarborough Gilwood, Ward 19, TDSB. And also we have Naima. And Naima is running for City Council, Ward 1, Etobicoke. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Home Market TV. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. Yeah, awesome. So, so I I want to I want to get into it. Um, this is your first time running for both of you. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Um, and I'm sure the the reasons are different. Sammy is running for 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 city for uh, school uh, trustee. Mm -hmm. uh, Naima, you're running for city council uh, in a topical. Mm -hmm. So, um, what inspired you uh, to run? Um, so, as you've mentioned, I've from Scarborough, I've lived in Scarborough um, most of my life. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been there for over 20 years. And for the past seven years, I've been working downtown. And as you go through Scarborough and you take that subway and you make that journey every morning, you see uh, the changes that happens in the city in terms of the resources that are available, in terms of uh, um, the youth experiences. Uh, so being someone who always cared about education and being a mother uh, first and foremost as well as a community uh, advocate uh, it was very important for me to step up and continue doing the work I, I've been doing for the past 16 years but just in a different way yeah. um, which is you know putting my name forward um, for public office to actually be at the table and to have uh, you know be part of that group that can advocate for better resources for Scarborough uh, advocate on behalf of the youth the students the parents and the community um, of Scarborough uh, especially Scarborough Guildwood um, yeah so that's pretty that's much amazing. the reason yeah. that, that's that's pretty much a good reason to be inspired you were already doing the work Absolutely. you were advocating for for education and basically for marginalized community for marginalized people of our community and that's great. And uh, Naima, you, you grew up in Etobicoke. You're a Etobicoke girl. You attend schools in Etobicoke. Right. Uh, and also, this is your neighborhood. You know the neighborhood. Uh, tell me what inspired you to run for city council. For me, I think it was, a, it was a similar reasons. Uh, there is a great need for representation. I've lived in Etobicoke and worked pretty much my whole life. Lived there since the age of three. Attended schools there. Worked there, studied there. Um, in particular in the area of developmental work, community development in particular, and as a counselor, I've been doing that for over 10 years. And the reality is we have a vibrant community, a young community. The median age is in the mid-30s. Mm -hmm. However, there are issues of criminalization and high unemployment rate. Take for example, even with a university degree, mm -hmm. in the area of Etobicoke North, some pockets of, in the community, in this area in particular, in the Dixon area, some young people can face a more to 73% unemployment and underemployment rate. Mm -hmm. Now, that is also compounded by what's going on in the larger aspect of this, the city of Toronto as a collective community. One in four children live in poverty. That is not a surprise when we put into consideration that one in five adults, that is their parents, living in poverty. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, we also have the attacks on the working class, the denial of 15 and fairness. Now, some people may say that's a provincial issue, but it is also a municipal issue Yes. The fact that we can advocate in city council on the issue of gun violence on all three levels of government, but cannot attach it as much to the issue of high rates of poverty. Gun violence, for example, push out rates of schools, lack of investment. I'm really happy you're running for trustee, by the way. And the underfunding of Toronto District School Board with a $4 billion backlog is tied to the fact that how we value certain communities. Yes. When we look at the discourse, for example, in Ward 7 coming out of Mamaliti, that certain people are roaches, that we should spray them down. No. We should knock down social housing. This is genocidal language. Absolutely, it's very you dangerous know? and problematic. It's very dangerous, yeah. it's very problematic, mm -hmm. and running is also a way to humanize us, mm. to counter dehumanization of certain communities, and say that irrespective of our race, irrespective of our class and gender, we all matter. Absolutely. We all have a space. Yeah. And if I tie it in particular, I know that you focus on the Somali Canadian community. Yeah. 
I want also our younger generation to see that we are, in fact, pushing back against the narrative and making space to create our own narrative. Our own narrative. We, mm -hmm. we, we, we can change the narrative. We, yes. we rewrite their narrative. Yes. I, that's very important. I'm glad you touched on that because I, I want us to, to see that w also women's involvement in politics mm -hmm. and why that is an important role. We right. see that um, our households are led by women, mm -hmm. our mothers, and, and the, our mothers are very resilient and strong. And mm -hmm. as, as diaspora kids that grew up here, mm -hmm. in Toronto in particular, we see that we feed off mm -hmm. our parents mm -hmm. and that gives us a strength and also we are a big important of our society. Right. We're giving back, we're taxpayers. Yes. It's about time that we push policy Mm -hmm. to, to favor us, to give us our rights mm -hmm. initially. We're not asking for anything more than mm -hmm. our rights because uh, you, you touched on youth mm -hmm. violence and uh, gun, gun control. Mm -hmm. Gun control policies are not working. What's happening mm -hmm. in the city? Mm -hmm. We don't want to become like Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, like the, this is one of the greater Toronto mm -hmm. area that's uh, very safe, so we want to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, ladies, uh, you both inspire me, and I'm glad you both are running. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. want you to touch on things that you really want to tackle. Mm -hmm. I want to start with Samia. If elected, yes. October 22nd, mm -hmm. as a school trustee, what are the main things that you want to focus on first? So there are a list of things. Uh, one of the first things that I want to talk about, and I will just maybe tie it into the conversations that we're having around uh, safety and over-policing of uh, black bodies and you know our youth in the school board system. Uh, even though the SROs or the uh, resource uh, officers at schools have uh, been, that program has been discontinued demolished, and yeah. demolished, mm -hmm. there has been a talk about reviving it, depending on who gets in in, in power. So it's very important for us to make sure that um, kids who are in school, who are there to learn, are not being criminalized and not being over policed, and that, it, that we break the mm -hmm. you know, school to prison pipeline that we've you know, had over the past you know, decades had, um, had to deal with. As, as communities, racialized communities particularly. Yeah. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing to address is the, the backlog in terms of um, you know, our opportunities to fix our schools and not having the resources, so having um, no ventilations in the, in the summer and no heating in, in the winter, winter and then having spaces that have mold and broken steps and um, playgrounds that are uh, rusty and not safe and, they, and continuously being um, blocked off and therefore not giving our kids spaces to, to play and to actually be physically active. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the other thing. It's really pushing. Um, yes, this is definitely a provincial uh, issue, but also the city has a say in terms of work, being able to work with a progressive and, and open um, council that can uh, support the education system. So knowing that there's over 58 um, current MPPs that have signed a pledge form to fix our schools. So holding these M those MPPs accountable, accountable for what they have, the promises right. that they made during the election. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I want to bring up, especially for our uh, secondary school students, is uh, the issue of mental health mm -hmm. and um, substance use as well. And not having a lot of the uh, resources that they need in the school, uh, as well as calling. So my background is in, in social work. My background, I've worked as a, a counselor counselor for youth dealing with substance use and mental health uh, in Jane and Finch actually, surprisingly. Uh, so the idea is uh, making sure that we have a holistic approach, that we have a harm, harm reduction approach, okay. that youth have um, resources in the school as well as working with community, with families, so, Absolutely, yeah. so that it's not only when they walk into the school but that they feel safe in their communities, that yeah. they have food at the table, that they have programs before school and after school. As a working mother, that is crucial for me to ensure that our schools have you know, proper after school and before school. Absolutely. Uh, for, for, for the, yeah. for, for the, especially, you know, the younger kids who are in elementary school. Mm -hmm. So these are just few things to kind of uh, start us off. Uh, but there's actually, we have a laundry mm -hmm. list of things that we need to fix it's in our a education lot system. To tackle. <laughs> Absolutely. And the bandage solutions in the TDSB has mm -hmm. to stop. Mm -hmm. like, some of these buildings need to be demolished completely yes. and rebuilt. 
because uh, not a safe mm -hmm. environment. And also, us, and yeah. also, we need to continuously invite the communities that we are mm -hmm. situated in. The schools are not standalone buildings that are gated, that are uh, disconnected from the communities that they are located in. So the idea of viewing the school as a community hub, as a, a space where, regardless of the age of uh, of uh, the person who lives there, or you know their ability, disability, their language, their culture, that they they can feel that these are spaces that they can walk into, Absolutely. and that we have programs that are, uh, you know, after six o'clock when people come back from work and on the weekends and yeah. use the space accessible, that we have. Accessible, so this is this is that, the yeah. point. This is the expense that the city programs happens and community organizations, um, the, the millions of dollars that they spend mm -hmm. uh, renting elsewhere. Is there a more efficient and effective way to make sure that we are better utilizing these spaces that mm -hmm. we have? Absolutely, absolutely. Naima, same, same question. If elected October 22nd, mm -hmm. what are the main things that you want to focus on as a city councilor? The main things I would say is a on poverty reduction mm -hmm. and sustainable economic development by way of emphasizing community benefits agreements. Now, the reason why I emphasize community safety and wellness is that you cannot have a progress economic uh, future in a community without emphasizing it from a holistic framework. So, for example, we have a high unemployment rate in our communities. Many of them, as I said, are young people who are recent graduates. Is why I have a youth strategy as well as a new college graduate and university graduate. So for me, it's working with the city council to say that we need to emphasize and mentoring our youth, looking towards how can we expand and also looking at paid internship opportunities. Mm -hmm. I look at it also from a personal perspective because I know how hard it was for me as a working class uh, student from a working class community and having to forego jobs as part of my education. Mm -hmm. That meant that the other student whose parents was a lawyer or a doctor didn't have to struggle as much as I did. Yeah. For me, it was literally looking at how much would bus fare cost? Mm -hmm. How much would that leave for lunch? How much would that add up to on a monthly basis? So it's really emphasizing and working and advocating for communities, including low-income members of these communities, to say, can we get both the municipal level members of the government, uh, the provincial levels of the government, and the federal levels of the government, and say, let's break down silos. I don't believe in silos. We've seen that with the gun violence issue. Why is that we can all work together on this issue, but we can't work on issues of poverty reduction? Mm -hmm. So on community benefits agreement, one of the things that I'm also trying to do is um, promote building a, a really a state-of-the-art recreational hub for our community yes. so that we can also ensure that we inf um, invest in tech skills, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial skills for our communities, our young people, including the adults there. How about allowing those community benefit agreements with the city to have them cook and sell their food? Maybe make clothing and sell the clothing. You know, there's Teach so many skills. things. Teach them skills. Transferable skills. Exactly. Sustainable results, development. Yeah. But yeah. more importantly, mm -hmm. on the issue of affordable housing as well, I would also say, and housing in general, we need to look at how the issue of gentrification also impacts communities. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why should we push out the members of the communities that became well-educated? Mm -hmm. They can, in fact, be great mentors Within. to the young. Absolutely. Allow them and give them the pathways to rent within these communities and perhaps even see ways in which they can own within these communities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? That's great. How about the seniors that don't have walkable space? Uh, it's surprising for Etobicoke North. There mm -hmm. is no recreational center. Mm -hmm. And we we see the depression rate, right. mental health, right. all that. A solution could be to have a walkable, accessible recreational mm -hmm. center exactly. that facilitates from seniors all the way to our young. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm also a social worker. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's always emphasizing having programs across the lifespan. I look at loneliness. Basically, isolation is one of the number one killers of our elderly people. I see that. Yeah. I work with, with, with that community as well. Seeing how we can invest in intergenerational programming. Yes. Partnering them with our youth. Mm -hmm. or even the younger children. Absolutely. We know that there's health benefits tied to that. Yes. Right. And that's the kind of programming that the, the TDSB could also benefit mm -hmm. from. Uh, the idea of learning more than what 
books teach you, mm -hmm. gaining the wisdom from the elders. Exactly. And also, uh, you've mentioned something that's really important, the idea of um, you know, having inquiry-based thinking, an inquiry-based learning, where kids are able to you know, be creative and mm -hmm. be in, 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 use social innovations yes. and come up with mm -hmm. new ways that we've mm -hmm. never thought about. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, just to add to, to, to what you're saying, um, you know, we can't continuously teach uh, our young people things that worked 40 years ago mm -hmm. or no, 20 years yeah, ago for no. that matter. Mm -hmm. we, we, are, we are witnessing the emergence of jobs that didn't exist 10 mm -hmm. years ago, like social media analysts and all these things. Mm -hmm. So it's about how do we teach them for the future. Right. The jobs that they will have in 20 years don't exist right mm -hmm. now. Exactly. And in terms of investing in education, it's it's one of those things that have a guaranteed return on investment. Right. Yeah. So if we are if we care about economic growth, if exactly. we care about being competitive globally, if right. we create if we care about creating a, a workforce mm -hmm. that can put this country and, yeah. and this mm -hmm. city in the forefront, mm -hmm. then we have to invest in oh, education. Absolutely. There's no if yeah. and financial buts about it. education yes. within mm -hmm. the school board. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we should push for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I wish if I had some sort of mm -hmm. educational background, I got my first credit card my first year of yes, college. Yes. <laughs> and boy, <laughs> always give it to you for free. Five, absolutely. <laughs> you thought you were hitting the lottery, huh? Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I spent it on second cup lattes and all the you know useful stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I wish if I had, right. including the mathematics and the algebras and all that, right. some sort of financial education. Right. And it's it's life skills, life right? Skills, so it's not only yes. financial education, it's all yeah. the things that we're right. talking about, mm -hmm. which right. we, which as an adult will right. place you in a in a better puts your foot mm -hmm. in a better place. Right. Yeah. One of the things I really look forward to on the matter of education is really working closely with the trustees to ensure that we could also, and the, and, and the TDSB, create great partnerships so that we can actually prepare these young people, yes. not only for university, but beyond that, yes. it, it, especially for first generation students. Mm. Because I always, when I talk to young people, I say, at the end of the day, your degree is a paper. What is, and it's important, mm -hmm. but what's important and the greatest benefit, uh, benefit to you is connection. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we have is young people graduating. Yeah. Yes. They don't know the ins and the outs of how to actually establish yourself. Yes. How to you conduct know. an interview. Exactly. How to sell yourself. Exactly. Uh, they shy away from jobs like that require experience. Mm -hmm. But especially girls do that. Right. Women yeah. do that. Right. Go for it. It does require experience, but how do you sell yourself? Mm -hmm. Maybe your internship was important during yes. schooling. Mm -hmm. Your co-op hours could be as added mm -hmm. as experience. Exactly. So those transferable, tangible right. skills yeah. that our youth don't really necessarily right. And you, br you brought up a very important question. The number of young people who are graduating with degrees, mm -hmm. but without any experience, without any connections, and at the end of the day are you know thinking, why do I mm -hmm. not have a job? When right. you have the next person who is uh, right. who's being interviewed with you has 10 internships right. and has 20 <laughs> networking ab yeah. opportunities. So. Yes. But I think it's also a multi-pronged level issue. That, yeah. and that's, a that's a great point as well. Yeah. But also doing better in city council mm -hmm. to acknowledge the fact that not everybody has the same opportunities in life. Absolutely. When we say one in four children live in poverty, this is also the young people who are university in these universities yes. who grew up in such conditions. Yeah. You have communities where people have never had a job and education is supposed to be the great equalizer. Yeah. So once they yeah. studied and did an internship with yes. you, yes. you need to make sure that there is an equitable access to I, jobs. Yeah, but we equitable. don't have a lack of access to jobs in this city yes. or in this nation. It's a lack of equitable access to jobs. Yeah. This is the issue. So not so much equality, e equity. equity is right. very important. When you're asking for five years yeah. of prior work experience and you're saying some communities are 50% rates of you know, poverty, mm -hmm then we are not doing the right thing. We need to but be it's, able it's to also take about, young people under our wings. Yeah, it's also about creating these opportunities for young people mm -hmm. to know, yeah. to, to know where to find it. Because mm -hmm. I often uh, give an ex the example of work, walking through the dark, trying to find a wall blindfolded. Mm -hmm. That's most of our experiences as, um, you know, generation five point, you know, 1.5 who kind of grew up here yes, yes. and had to go for the first time through the university system, right. through the schooling system, through the mm -hmm. job market is exactly yes. that. You know, yes. we, we, are, we are going around without yeah. any guidance yeah. because we, there's no system set up for a lot of young people mm -hmm. to be able to walk through. Mm -hmm. and, and as you've been mentioning, like 
recognize what are those opportunities. The right. opportunities exist, the internships are there. The city of Toronto has a number of internships. Mm -hmm. yes. But the question is, when do you find out about it? Where do you find out mm -hmm. about it? How do you, do you access, how do you access mm -hmm. the information? That's, That's mm -hmm. basically, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. equally, the school board, um, and this is the thing, um, this is the other thing about you know need based need based funding for even schools because mm -hmm. not all communities have the same needs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So being cognizant of so right. the social determinants of education equally similar to the social determinants of oh, yeah. health. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Right. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, why is it important for women's involvement in politics? And I'm, I, when I say that, <laughs> I, I, I'm smiling because. I, we see countries like Rwanda, right. the so-called underdeveloped world or the developing world. Right. Mm -hmm. So we see women's involvement in parliament, mm -hmm. how the society shifts yeah. and society change. When women get into politics, a lot of positive comes out of it. Mm -hmm. More um, accountable, more trans, tra tra transparent right. compared to their counter male right. uh, part. So what do you guys think uh, is important for women's involvement in politics. Right. Well, you can't ignore half of the population that you yeah. have yeah. and expect to eradicate issues like poverty, expect to eradicate issues such as crime, mm -hmm. or even lack of education because most likely it is the mother who's the first educator. Absolutely. And that's not to look down on our the fathers. Many of them do great jobs as well. Absolutely. But it's just I'm talking about in terms of proportions here. So we know that with statistics, when you invest in the education of a mother or a girl, mm -hmm. When you invest in the, uh, the, the access to jobs for a woman, or even basic income uh, for, for women, then the health and the educational attainment of children improve, and the children are our future. Absolutely. So you cannot overlook investing in, 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 in women. And women need to also be on the forefront, but we also, as sisters, and I'm not just saying as Somalis, yeah. but as women, mm -hmm. need to be able to not see each other as threats. We need to make sure we open the door, Absolutely. better yet kick the hinges off the door so that the next generation and your next sister can come in and learn. Yes. The all boys club do it. We need to be able they do to it. <laughs> do it very well. take women so just to add to wings. that, one of the things that, um, that you've mentioned, it's the, the different styles of leaderships that women bring mm. to the table, mm. uh, the consensus building, the, mm. the leadership that is based on evidence, uh, the leadership that is based on long-term mm -hmm. uh, community benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, women consistently outperform men in terms of, you know, you know, corruption rates yes. and, and uh, you know, so, so at the end of the day, it's 2018, uh, women are here, we're here to stay. Yes, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. <laughs> We've been doing, uh, you know, incredible work, um, building communities. Uh, it's, it's about time right. that we are not only the, the ones who are lifting the society up, but also the ones that are actually making the decisions. Mm -hmm. yes. so, so we have to have continuously oh, We have to be part, part yeah. of the policy. We need to be at the yeah. table. Decisions that do affect us right. Absolutely. and affect everybody yes. uh, in, within our community right. at large. Yeah. I think we need to also yeah. respect the, the skills, as you said, but I think sometimes what is dangerous is when we emulate a particular aspect of what leadership ought to be mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. that is a dangerous thing yeah. because we can perpetuate those cycles of oppression ourselves, yeah. whether it's based on race, whether it's based on class, or gender. gender, there will always be issues, right? Absolutely. So we have a long work to do, mm -hmm. and as, as sisters, we need to get together and ensure, you know, across race and class, sorry, yeah. <laughs> we need to, yeah. <laughs> see, that's saying we need to I get out right here. lost some weed campaigning. <laughs> yes. And the ring came oh, stupid yes. now. <laughs> oh, yes. No, but we yeah. need to work together and make Absolutely. sure we create those spaces for one another. Ladies, I just want to ask you one last question. Sure. Why why should people vote for you? I'm gonna start with Samia. Okay. For a school trustee, why should people of Scarborough, yeah. Guildwood, vote for you? So, uh, as I mentioned, I am rooted in Scarborough. I am a community leader. I have been doing this work uh, for free, <laughs> forever, and will continue to being part of the community. Uh, I care about education. Uh, 
education has got me where I am, trying and just saying yes all the time to any opportunity and every opportunity has gotten me where I am. I've literally mentored hundreds of young people across the city. I, um, I am able to build consensus. I am able to listen. I've been knocking doors, talking to thousands of residents of Scarborough Guildwood, really hearing their concerns and hearing how can we fix our education system. Um, I am, I'm, education runs into my blood. I have a master's degree. I have a, many, many years of experiences, whether it's um, being fiscally responsible, um, managing multi-million dollar projects, or uh, running large scale initiatives that are across the province. And finally, really from, from that kind of large scale across the province to programs that are rooted in community, that are grassroots led, that have limited budget but have far and wide reach. So I can work with um, whatever budget I, can, I, I have. Uh, I can ensure accountability and fiscal responsibility. I can ensure community voice at the table. And finally, I can ensure that our young people are you know, safe and, and are learning in a, a positive environment that really fosters their growth, regardless of what their postal code is regardless of you know, how much money their parents make or regardless if their parents mm -hmm. are working three jobs to meet the minimum requirements of living or not. Absolutely, thank you so much. Naima, you are facing a very uh, kind of like a very hard municipal uh, election, especially in Toronto because um, of the changes that happen and the reduction of the number of the city council. So you have <laughs> much wider space right. and many more doors to knock. Right. Okay. So having said that, why should people vote for you for Ward 1? Why should people vote for me? Well, both, both from a personal background as well as you know my educational background and work experience, I would say I'm the right candidate. I have a background in international development studies. I've worked in the, in the area of development work for 10 years now with people across the lifespan, from babies to the elderly. I'm also an, indiv an individual who unifies people it does not use hate or fear mongering to divide our population. For example, it is why my catchphrase is not really a catchphrase, it's something that I believe to my core. It told the core North strong. We are stronger when we are united as a community and that can also transfer as well as the way that I would like to see myself as a city council member sitting there saying that we need to work together. But more importantly, we cannot have a city where our slogan is diversity, our strength, and do not see as much diversity represented, accounted for, 51% plus. Our minorities, visible minorities, as they would say, persons of color, Yes, we don't see that. And also more importantly, we need a person that is able to uh, bring both the private sector, the public sector, and, and, and communities together you know, including the educational system, our Toronto District School Board, to expand opportunities, because I believe that that is the type of leadership we need. And, and, it's, and it's time that we also create space in Etobicoke North to be led by a woman of a working class background, because this is also a way that we can ensure we protect the workers' class. And Absolutely. I've been a great advocate for better pay, and better working conditions, but also speaking to the issue of gun violence because I don't have enough fingers on my hand to account for the amount of people we've lost. Too many. And too many, and we need a person that ties that to the issue of poverty. Absolutely, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you ladies for your time. Mm -hmm. Our viewers, you heard it here um, at Home Market TV. We encourage you to go out and vote, exercise your civil rights duty, on October 22nd. You have people that look like you, that speak your language, not only they understand the struggles and the issues that you face. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Oh and happy God. Somali and Islamic heritage month. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, it is. <laughs>